Does it look like we're recording now? We are recording. You're in good okay. shape. Okay, here we go again. Uh, as I said, my name is Clayton Bagwell. I'm with uh, Nurse Account and Alloc Allocation Support, and this is our RCAP, the Energy Research Computing Allocation Process uh, breakout session. Um, and here we're going to talk about, ah, there they are, um, how people can request time from NERSC um, to get on, run on our computers. Okay, so ERCAP is accessed um, through our special URL, ERCAP.NERSC.gov. Uh, you'll use your NERSC username, password, and one-time password to log into the system. Uh, you, used, you used ERCAP to um, renew your current projects and also to request uh, new projects. Uh, we collect information like science objectives, uh, your approach, your resource requirements such as computing time, archival and community storage space. Uh, and that information is then reviewed by the DOE Office of Science Program Managers, Allocation Managers, and they set the awards for how much time uh, approved uh, requests will receive. Um, these allocation awards are, will be announced in December and the upcoming allocation year is AY 2021, which will be starting January 19th in, in 2021. Okay, um, so uh, we usually have a, uh, an open call for proposals about this time of year. So it opened up August 10th of this month, and all submissions will need to be due in by October 5th. Now, uh, we usually receive 95% of all of the nurse um, proposals during this time period, uh, although ERCAP is open year round. So um, it, if you can get them in during this time, it's better for you. Uh, otherwise, if you don't get your funding until later or earlier next year, you can still submit an ERCAP request and it will be reviewed. Uh, after October 5th, DOE will start the review process and the award announcements will be sent out about the week of December 14th. And again, uh, that's for a time that will be starting in uh, January 19th, 2021. So, um, the amount of time that we'll have available for distribution um, in AY 2021 is the same as what we've had, or similar to what we have for this year, about 6.8 billion hours. Although if you've listened to some of the other uh, talks regarding Perlmutter, uh, we will provide some free time on Perlmutter throughout 2021, um, depending upon the uh, implementation schedule. Uh, we offer a lot of assistance for uh, people trying to fill out their ERCAP requests. Uh, if you have any questions or problems, you can always email us at allocations at nurse.gov. Uh, we will be setting up uh, special office hours, which will um, this year, I guess, are going to be by um, um, schedule appointment. Um, but these are the, the days that we are shooting for to have those on those office hours, and then the sign-up process uh, will be announced in the weekly emails. Now, I could just go through a bunch of slides and show you all the different things that you can do, uh, but we thought it'd be good if I just go ahead and give you a demonstration. So, let's flip over to this slide. And So here I'm logged into the ERCAP system, um, and this is what we call the ERCAP um, request homepage. Uh, you can see that uh, we have sections, um, have the page divided into sections for new requests, draft requests, requests that have been submitted and are under review. And if you've been around for a while or even a year, uh, you'll have previous requests uh, down here at the bottom. Uh, so we still have the link up for submitting a request for time for this year, 2020. Um, that will probably be coming down about 
the first of November, um, since they're we'll be getting so close to the, the next year. Um, and you can use this green button here to start a renewal of your current uh, project, a request for your current project, or the blue button for a brand new uh, project. And these buttons are matched by these menu options over on the left-hand side, uh, create a new request for 2021, renew a previous project, um, start a request for 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and let's start a request for 2021. So we have here um, the main, uh, the top screen of the, the AirCap request. Um, we provide as much help as we can for to give you instructions on, on how to fill out requests. You'll see information in like these blue boxes. Um, and yeah, like here, um, we have um, required fields that are mandatory and you'll see them um, noted with asterisks. Or like on the tabs down here, uh, if you see a little asterisk in the tab, that means that there are some mandatory items underneath the tab that need to be addressed. Uh, we also have uh, pop-up uh, text boxes. I don't know if you can see that. Did that show up? I hope so. Okay. Um, for different fields. So you can find out more information about um, what, what's required in, the, in this field. And any field that has a, a line under it, that's of course a, a link that will take you to um, some page on the nurse, one of the nurse sites uh, for more information. So we have, oh, great. Uh, we have our uh, main project title here. Call from Browns Deli. <laughs> All right, of course. All right, so let's start with our project title. Um, So this will be most likely the title that's on your uh, funding um, um, grant or whatever you have. Um, um, and then we also ask for a label. So the label is a, a shortened version um, of your project so that, that makes it easy to, to find and it's used in things like reports. Um, Etc. Uh, so short title. Um, so most programs, uh, most will be under the DOE Mission Science um, project class. Um, but there are also, um, we have um, education and exploratory requests. So exploratory is if you're brand new to, to NERSC and um, you haven't used NERSC systems before, you can request an exploratory account. It's about 100,000 hours. That's just to get you to get on the machine, get uh, set up and uh, being able to work with um, what we have. Um, education requests are um, for people who are um, instructors providing classes that use um, HPC and would benefit from um, the students being able to, to work on an actual HPC computer. Uh, and then we also have uh, Director's Reserve, which is special projects that usually you need to have some type of prior arrangement with NERSC in order to apply for a, um, a project under this class of uh, allocation. Um, so we have the various programs um, at DOE that you can get your um, that you get your uh, funding from, and uh, select the same sub program. And then, of course, we also have whatever science category your research is under. Now, there's a number of ways that you can um, 
try and sort through some of these things. So for instance, uh, you may saw, notice that I, oops, can't do that. There it is. I put in a couple of asterisks in the box. It'll provide me a list of some options here. And you'll see that it's showing me the first 15 of 54 items. Well, that's a lot of items to sort through. So let's see if we can refine it to physics. Okay, so that that sorted it down to 12 different items. Um, and then the other way to actually, if you want to see the whole list, any of these uh, fields that have a magnifying glass on the right hand side, um, that will give you a pop up list. And here you can see um, 56 items. And again, you can also um, refine the search here by in this search box at the top. Uh, let's say, did I spell compute wrong? Yes, I spelled compute wrong. To help uh, refine your search, and then that will fill in your field for you. Now, as I showed a little earlier, um, so that we don't have a big long form for you to fill out, we have the whole uh, request divided up into these tabs. Uh, so the first one is for uh, information on your personnel. Um, you can put in senior investigators. So many funding grants will, uh, will list a number of in, um, investigators on it, but we can only, we can only support a, a, a main uh, single investigator. So that's the principal investigator will be here. Um, but anybody else who's like a, a, a key personnel or another uh, uh, principal investigator that needs to be um, associated with the project, you can put their names in, in here. Um, so that the, uh, they'll be seen by the DOE reviewers. Uh, we also have what's called authorized preparers. So if you have a, a lot of information or a number of, or, or have the job, have the work divided up between uh, multiple people, you can add uh, additional uh, authorized preparers who can help you to fill out the form. So, Put my name here. I can add myself. So now I can fill up the form as well as the uh, the test principal investigator here. Okay, let's go to funding. So you need to select at least one form of funding. We have a number of options. Um, most funding comes from the DOE Office of Science. And again, here you'll um, select the office that provided your funding. And they also would like to have the program manager uh, who you were working with there, which may or may not be um, the allocation manager. Um, all of the ERCAP requests go to the allocation manager and uh, if they have questions, they'd like to be able to contact the program manager that you worked with. Um, if the program manager is not on our list, um, you can always select not listed and then include it down here with uh, the funding information that you have um, for your grant, your PAMs, or FP, FWP members. Um, okay. All right, so if your funding comes from the DOE Office of Science, um, you're lucky that you don't have to fill up this information down here. If your funding doesn't happen to come from the DOE Office of Science, say you're at a university, um, you would need to provide some type of justification for how your research supports the mission of one of the DOE Office of Science programs. And that information will then be required down here. Um, so we also have 
uh, federal agencies that people can get uh, funding from. Um, for example, we've got uh, uh, National Institute Standards and Technology. Uh, we have the EPA, we have Institute of Health, et cetera. You can actually, in this section, um, select multiple um, organizations that you're getting your funding from, and then also provide that grant information uh, down here. Um, and FE. And there, okay, and now, oh, and, and I see that there's still an asterisk there, which means somewhere around here, ah, justification. Uh, how, my, how my research supports a DOE Office of Science mission, and that's the program up here that you listed under program. Okay, uh, we have some security questions. So uh, we only support open research that is um, intended to be published in scientific journals, et cetera. We don't allow um, um, security or yeah, classified or export controlled or any type of research that requires uh, PII or PIH. Um, and you have either the, yes, um, I test that um, this project adheres to these guidelines, or no, and then you have to provide um, explanation for why it doesn't, and then your, your explanation will be evaluated, and we'll have to make a decision about going forward from there. But we can go ahead and use that. Uh, project details. So we asked for a couple of different um, blocks of text for information on your project. Um, so the first one is just a summary. And this is kind of what is the, the uh, scientific American journal level explanation of what your project does. Something that can um, uh, be understood for somebody outside of your field who is not totally familiar with it. Um, the second one is a more detailed description that includes your, your scientific method and your, your processes and those kinds of things. Something that the DOE managers can use to see if um, what you're doing fits in with their mission uh, and how you're doing it. Um, and we also ask for a website URL for your project, um, if you have one. If this were a renewal request, um, we would also be asking you for your accomplishments for your project for the, the past year. Um, what you did using NERSC um, resources and any publications that you might have um, generated uh, from the research that you did with using NERSC. Um, at one of the very beginning uh, sessions, you probably saw that we get some is it 2,000 publications or, no, or 20,000 publications? We get a lot of publications mentioned here. So um, that's, how, that's your project details. Uh, next would be the resources that you need. So how much time do you need? Um, so if you were a continuing project, you'd see how many hours you've used in NERSC here. Uh, and over here, you can request how many hours do you need? So keep in mind that these three particular fields, um, your hours, um, the archival storage, which is HPSS, and CFS project storage, these are integer fields. So you can't go in and say, I want 20 million hours or 25 million hours, because since it's an integer field, um, it's going to take out any characters. So when this gets submitted, you're going to be requesting 25 hours, not 25 million hours. So make sure 
you put in all the zeros. And yes, I know there's no uh, commas there, but it's all right. And also, um, we don't accept um, decimals. Decimals will be trunk will be um, rounded. So here I asked for 55.5. We don't accept decimals, so it rounded up to the 56. Um, the default um, community file system storage is 20 uh, terabytes. If you need more than that, um, you'll need to adjust this. We also ask you for justification for these numbers that you just presented. Why do you need 25 million hours? How did you come up with that number? Um, experimental. I'll learn how to type eventually. Process. Of course, you'll um, you'll have more detailed information than that. Um, we also ask for things like your key events and deadlines. Uh, do you need real-time computing? Um, is your project using experimental or observational data? Uh, let's see, real-time computing, that's, are, are you hooked up to some type of an experiment um, for live data like they're doing at the LCLS now? And also any special requirements or is, is this a, uh, a multi-year program that you're, you're running? Um, that's all, all helpful in helping us to um, plan our resource usage and, and where we might need to expand uh, in the future. All right, next is our, your codes. What kind of codes are you using? And we're asking for like your top five codes, um, which might be something like uh, VASP. Um, you put in the, a URL for where this code um, is, is home-based, and then also a description of um, what that uh, code does. Okay, um, supporting documents. Uh, do you have um, other HPC support? Uh, do you have a DOE Insight application award or any type of an exceed award, et cetera? Um, anything that would um, help us understand your project and what type of resources you need. Uh, if you have any other additional information that you want um, to be considered for your request, that can be included here. And of course, then um, give us some feedback on, on the ERCAP process itself and how you think it's working. And then finally, um, we ask uh, for some um, monitoring agreements. So if, you, if we provide you, um, if this project is given an award, uh, we want you to the best of your ability to monitor the usage and make sure that what your people are doing are, is using these resources for the project as described. And also if this is a renewal and you're project is continuing, that you have, to the best of your ability, spent some time monitoring um, your, your people and their usage and that they have been using the time for um, this project. And uh, we just asked for a little initial verification and that's that. So let's go ahead and just save this first. Now, you can create a PDF of this request. Uh, there's a button up here in the upper right. Uh, so click on that button. The system will generate a PDF. Um, and then you'll be able to download it, um, print it out if you need to, so you have a copy other than what we have in the system. And when you think everything's done, you can go ahead and submit the request for review. 
and we'll ask you to confirm, are you really ready to submit it? And we say yes, and they say, uh-oh, you can't because you left out some mandatory fields. Uh, your description for DOE managers and project summary, which is where this little asterisk is, and we didn't fill in these here. Oh, this one's summary. This one's details. Okay, so all the little asterisks are gone here. Get rid of this and say submit for review. Yes, try again. And now this is available for the DOE program managers to evaluate. And it'll show up down here under your requests submitted for under review. And that's the basic process. So after October 5th, DOE will start um, evaluating uh, the proposals and they'll make their award announcements in December. So that's ERCAP. Um, is there any questions out there? I don't see a chat thing in here. No questions in the chat? Uh, there's a question about uh, GPU hours. Yes, yeah, so that will be happening in 2022. So Perlmutter itself is not going to really arrive or be available to users until April of this next year. And then at that point, it's going to be um, it's going to be in a friendly user mode. So 2022 is when it's going to start being in production. And if I'm correct, the slides will be available as PDFs after the present, um, after NUG is over, right? Is yeah, that that's right. Okay. So if you didn't catch everything that I said, um, the presentation does have uh, screenshots for all this same information that we went over. So you can see what we did. And of course, some helpful resources for information on the program managers or cap, getting help from accounts and allocations. Okay, um, so the next thing we're gonna do is just a quick little foray into Iris. Okay, so if we go to iris.iris.gov, Here's our familiar login page. Now, if you ever have any problems trying to log into Iris, we have a, a number of things here to help you. For instance, if you forgot what your password is or you need to reset it, you can use this link. If you don't remember what your nurse username is, shame on you, but you can also use um, this link to help you get your username. And the other requirement is our multi-factor authentication one-time passwords. Uh, if that's not working for you, you can come here to try and get that set up. So let's log in. And that one-time password. Okay, so this is not what you would normally see um, since I work with a lot of people in different accounts. Um, yeah. Here we go. So normally when you log into Iris, you'll probably go to um, your compute usage um, tab on your home. Now you notice this is this uh, bar at the top is blue. It has a number of tabs on it. Um, if you come all the way over here to profile, this is the information about the organization that you're with. Um, when your password 
was set and when it's going to expire. Uh, your basic contact information, here's your name. And if you need to change your organization, you can do that here. Email address, phone, etc. If you have an ORC ID, you can add that in here. Um, also, what's your, your citizenship and if you have a green card or not. And looks like there's some information missing from here, but this is, that's okay. We can deal with that. Um, if you need to reset your password, you can come in here and there's a, a button over on the right where you can reset your password. And for multi-factor authentication, there's a tab here where you can um, enable it and create a new token, uh, sync that up with some um, software or app such as Google Authenticator or Authy uh, to generate the one-time passwords for you to log in with. And the tab for roles tells you what projects you're in. Why does my PI not belong to a project? He's supposed to. Huh. Okay, well, you would see what project you're in um, in this section here. Uh, you can also see um, what storage you have. Uh, for instance, your, your home directory usage, um, your CFS project usage, and HPSS archive usage. Um, so HPSS, uh, if you're using um, HSI, it requires a requires a special token. So if you do run into problems with HPSS, you can always come here to generate your token um, uh, to help uh, fix that problem. Okay, so if you go to your project, I must not be the right person here. I'm going to stop impersonating and try it again. That's more like it. That's the one I wanted. Okay. There's my project. That's my compute usage. There's where my role is. I'm the PI of this project. Um, Here's my storage usage, et cetera. This goes back here, okay. Password chain, password expires, that's right. That looks better. And these are where I can log into. So Cori, Datatran, HPSS, et cetera. So let's go back here, back to roles. This takes me to the project, okay. Now, when you're looking at information about a project, you'll see that this blue bar up here is turned to gold, yellow, what have you. And you can see a graph of um, how usage should be going uh, on a continuous usage basis, um, how many hours were requested through ERCAP, how many were awarded, um, how much has been charged and how much is left available and the people associated with the project and how much time they've used. Uh, you can look at a list of the recent jobs run on this project, um, the amount of storage that's being used. So CFS is the community file system, the default 20 terabytes here, um, how much is actually being used. And scrolling further down, we have the HPSS archive quota, which in this case is 10 terabytes, and seven megabytes of that have been used. And you can see who's been using that amount of space. Uh, let's see, details is basic information about the um, project funding, the ERCAP details. Um, the label and description, et cetera, and your CFS quota. So uh, there's a couple of menus at the top here. Uh, projects, if you're a PI and you have more than one project, your list will be here 
this case there's only the one and reports so you, from the reports you can get uh, like daily computing activity uh, how much computing activity for the past month um, you can search through your jobs uh, you can get information on projects and your project directories um, and some of this I'm surprised that's on here that you sh I wouldn't think you'd be able to see. Um, so you can look at um, how the time was um, distributed for your account. For instance, if you go back here to details and also on compute, uh, no, it's not on the compute one here. It's on the details. You can get a transfer report for the time um, that's been given to your project. Okay, um, so is there anything in particular anybody else would like to see regarding Iris? There's something you wanted to know, how can I do that? And how do I do that? Anything in particular about Iris anybody wants to know about? Your guys are a well-informed group. Anybody have anything they want to teach me about Iris? Nope. Well, that means that we're going to get out quick. I guess everybody wants to go to lunch, don't they? Or well, at least it's lunchtime here. I don't know about where everybody else is. going on in the chat uh, I answered a few questions in the chat about okay. strategy for uh, requesting time okay I guess Clayton you just explained everything so well that <laughs> people don't have any questions cool well um, I'm going to give them 10 minutes of freedom to, to uh, get coffee. Coffee. I see somebody says they want coffee. I agree. Coffee is important right now. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you all for attending. I appreciate you spending your time with me. Um, hope you have a nice rest of your day and enjoy the rest of the, the NUG presentations. Um, and we will go ahead and stop recording. Recording. Oops, that's not what I wanted. There he is. <laughs>